This is Twit. You know, once upon a time, the industry was filled with colorful individuals. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about many of them in a few minutes, but I want to talk about one. Back in the early 80s, I was in graduate school, and the first job I was hired for coming out of graduate school was to manage conferences for a series of shows called the Byte Computer Shows. And I was, in addition, a conference manager for a computer show called Comdex, a networking show called Interface. The man who owned all of those shows and who I worked for was named Sheldon Adelson. Sheldon passed away this week, known more for his roles in gambling. Uh, he was the owner of Las Vegas Sands. Uh, he expanded that to Macau and to Hong Kong. And he was deeply involved in politics, donating millions upon millions of dollars to one political party. What I remember, though, was when he was running the largest computer show in the world. Now, interestingly enough, this week was also virtual CES, the show that has come to take over Comdex's place as the largest electronics-oriented show that happens in Las Vegas. But back in the early 80s, before the days of selling on the Internet, shoot, before the Internet was available to you if you weren't working for the government or at a research institution, and long before it was legal to conduct any business on the Internet, computers were sold by dealers. Every year, those dealers would find out what the latest computers were, what the latest printers were, the latest modems. And this was, by the way, in the days when we were just getting into 1,200 BPS modems, soon to be supplanted by 2,400 BPS. And we thought we were, were flying. But hundreds of thousands of people would come to Las Vegas, meet face-to-face, to hear about what was coming up in the coming months, to sign deals, to resell that hardware and the software. If you look back, it's, it's really something of a miracle that the industry developed the way it did. I remember the year before I went to work for Sheldon, there was a fire at the MGM Grand the MGM Grand Hotel caught fire, and in a tragic uh, instance, a number of people lost their lives when the locks on the counting cages for the casino defaulted to closed, trapping many people inside. What many people don't know is that that happened on the first day of Comdex, and so the computer industry as it existed then, the personal computer industry, was in Las Vegas, many of them staying at the MGM. The next morning, a lot of the booth staff, a lot of the salespeople, the, the engineers, the booth staff came to the convention center in clothes that were still smelling of the smoke, having lost the rest of the clothes that they came with to the fire in the tower. Sheldon sent his show manager around with wads of $100 taken from petty cash to hand out to people in the booths on the show floor, telling them to, to go get clean clothes and get what they needed to clean up. This was, by the way, at a time when 100 bucks would buy you enough to get cleaned up and a couple of sets of clothes. It was an amazing time when at one of these shows, you could quite easily see Michael Dell, Bill Gates, 
and even Steve Jobs walking the show floor. I remember being at parties at night when one or more of these individuals would be there just talking like regular human beings. The industry has changed. It changed first when many of the sales went to mail order. This was really the rise of the Dell era. This saw the, the move away from computer dealers to publications like Computer Shopper, which were often six to 800 pages of ads for computer dealers offering to sell you things via the mail. And then, of course, in the early 90s, things changed again when everything went to the Internet. Through all of this, Comdex, a computer dealer's expo, gradually lost its influence. And as things do in our industry, it lost favor, changed, was ultimately sold to a company called SoftBank. The money that came from that is what allowed Sheldon to get into the gambling industry. I've been privileged to, to follow the development of this industry for a long time. And Sheldon really did play a big role in its early stages of massive growth because without Comdex, it would have been much more difficult for the computer dealers to spring up in every small town. To, it would have been very difficult for people to know how to find the computers, the printers, those amazing green and amber monitors that we all use to type on in order to develop the use of computers as something that's absolutely essential. I want to talk with my co-host now because one of the things that was absolutely true was that in these days of the early part of the, the personal computer industry, there really were individuals that were identified with growth from Jack Trammell at Commodore to Bill Gates at Microsoft to people like um, Philippe Kahn at Borland. Individuals were critical, and many of these companies were based on the vision of those individuals. Now, it's, it's hard to imagine a huge company growing up like that, and it's notable when one is. The, the, the main uh, example right now seems to be Tesla and SpaceX, which are driven by the vision of a single individual. Lou, I, I want to talk to you first because you are, of course, working for a company that was worth hev once heavily identified with a single individual. Do you think that today we could see the rise of a genre-changing computer business that was the vision of a single person, or has it grown to a point where it really does take a team to make something earth-shattering happen? Actually, Lou's got some internet problems, but I'll take that question. The, the reality is there's always going to be room for a personality. You know, the Michael Dells of the world are not unique. There are other people like that. Um, we've had some really, really interesting um, things happening in India. We've had some really interesting things happening in Hong Kong. And the the industry is growing. You know, we're – my. I had a conversation with my father many decades ago. He was say, he's he's was in plumbing distribution, you know, the raw pipes and fixtures. He said if his industry has a 3% um, growth, they go out and throw a big party. 
And at that time, I was complaining. I was in regional distribution at the time. I was complaining that we only had, we didn't have 100% growth anymore. You know, he says, son, fact check. We only get a three percent, and we throw, we have a big party. Now, <clears throat> I was involved with Comdex in the very early years, but in at the distribution level. And one of the things about Comdex that a lot of people don't know is there was an awful lot of backroom deals and um, coordination and so forth. I actually was invited um, because we're at the distribution level to a meeting with Ray Norda of Novell. And at the time, there were only 10 distributors of Novell Network in the world. Well, old man Ingram, the founder of Ingram, Ingram Distribution, which then merged and became Ingram Micro D, basically before all the Novell people got in, he stood up in front of the rest of us and said, I don't know about you folks, but I'm going to refuse to sell Netware unless... Net Novell lets us teach netware in our distribution um, facilities. And we all thought this was a great idea. And Ray Norda came in, handed us these beautiful CEO club cross pens, Novell logo on the clip and everything. And then old man Norda came up and said, hey, this is, this is what's going to happen, Ray. And... Uh, after throwing several uh, vice presidents under the bus, <clears throat> Ray finally said, okay, fine. Thusly, each distribution um, center was allowed to have a single instructor sent. And that's how I became one of the first 10 Novell instructors on earth. One of the other things, I got to meet David Fry of Fry's Computers. Um, Toshiba was such a huge thing that we, they took over the entire Hilton pool deck right up to the fire marshal limit for the Toshi bar. So there was a lot of really interesting things. The industry was growing. And like I said, we were complaining if we didn't do 100% growth in a year. That was spawned by shows like Comdex because the internet didn't exist yet. And the amount of coordination happening was spectacular. Now, Kurt, were you one of the people that uh, arranged for the Cadillac size shrimp boat at Toshi Bar? Toshi Bar wasn't mine, although I do remember the epic shrimp at Toshi Bar. You know, part of it, it is amazing that years later, the thing that a major Japanese manufacturer is noted for is not their hardware not their peripherals, but the size of the crustaceans they served at their parties. They, they were massive. Um, it, was, it was a different time. Uh, as Brian said, the margins were huge. The growth was phenomenal. And each company was trying to gain attention from other companies by throwing these incredible parties. Uh, each night of Comdex, there would be multiple parties with touring rock bands performing on stage for a different group. I remember one year when the entertainment at the Microsoft party was helicopter rides over the, the strip in Las Vegas where it looked like some sort of army operation with scores of helicopters coming in to land and take off at the Thomas and Mac arena. The industry has grown. The industry has matured. And by and large, that's a great thing. What we should continue, though, is the energy and the idea that truly important things can be created that will change the world. It's something that fewer companies that I talk to have. I think that Lou's back, and I, I do want to give him a chance to come in because Lou's been around this industry and, and others. Lou, what do you think? Is the computer industry better 
as a responsible part of the economy, since it is more mature these days, since we don't have everything driven by rugged individuals and wild imaginations? <laughs> I definitely think it's matured. I mean, I think you got a big these big tech companies that have been around for a while. They've been around the block and they know um, just how economies are running and just how businesses are expanding. And I think that they have matured enough that we see less usage. I mean, you think about it. We see less usage in the enterprise for those types of individuals and those types of companies. So I definitely think that uh, over time, you will continue to see it evolve. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot more companies are doing much responsible computing and they're doing, um, you know, and they're doing responsible info sharing. You know, obviously with the pandemic over the last year, you know, you, unfortunately you see less and less of these trade shows um, and, you know, these offerings that, uh, you know, that a lot of us did love, like you guys were reminiscing about, I did love going to these junkets and these, and these different uh, events where you get great food and great entertainment. But in the same sense, a lot of these companies are starting to realize, hey, like that's expensive for us to send people and we can still get the information uh, remotely and um, we can still get it responsibly and, and, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I, I definitely think it's matured um, and I can will continue to see it evolve, especially this year uh, and the next year as the, as things kind of progress. It is going to be interesting to watch to see how we continue to evolve and to see how the individuals who remain continue to have an impact on the industry.